everybody. It's Donna Woods with Photonic Health, and this is our Health Made Simple interview. And today's a special guest. Um, we're going to talk all about dogs with uh, Karen Bishop. Karen is competitive in obedience, and she's a competitor herself and, and in dog training as well. And we met Karen actually through a mutual horse friend. And mm -hmm. um, I didn't even realize that she was a, a, a dog person or a, a dog trainer until, gosh, probably a couple of years after we had initially met. And I, I just thought she was a horse person because she was just so amazing with the horses. So I think she's both. She's a horse gal and a dog gal, um, as most horse people are. But today we're going to talk all about dogs. Uh, Brian and I are also dog lovers. I know a lot of you think that we just do horses, but we actually have a pack of our own and we usually always have between three and five dogs. And so we're currently at four. And um, mm -hmm. so I was super excited. I'm super excited to chat with you today, Karen, um, and to really give some more insight into dogs and dog training and dog behavior and, and dog obedience, because I think that, you know, our society is trained you know, the, the most um, most popular breed of dog right now is Golden Retriever. And mm -hmm. we've had Golden Retrievers. We actually used to breed Golden Retrievers and we've had them for gosh, 20 years. And, um, and they're e like, they're easy. Like they're, they're fabulous dogs. They're super easy and they, it's almost like they train themselves. If you can get past the two year chewing puppy stage. And we recently got a little French tin. It's a little Frenchy uh, bulldog, uh, Frenchy uh, Boston Terrier mix. And um, I understand that Frenchies are like really close behind the golden retrievers in popularity. And um, one of the interesting things that I've learned about the breed since we, we have one now is that they are have high play drive and that they can be a little bit stubborn and that they can be a little bit more independent. So I think, so me as a dog owner, I'm going and I own some pretty difficult breeds, I'm like, Ooh, this is going to not be a good thing for the Frenchie breed in a couple of years. <laughs> Do you agree with that? <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, and that's funny because, yeah, people get real into a certain breed and they don't realize that there are certain characteristics that mm, may not be quite as willing, may not be, or maybe a little more stubborn, you know, and then they start to find that. And you're right. Golden retrievers are a piece of cake. <laughs> right. I've had golden retrievers also. So yeah, they're a piece of cake. I, I've, and I love them, but, and I hate to say it, but anybody can train a golden retriever. <laughs> Cor it's just, correct. that's who they are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then they are, an, they are like the ultimate house dog, like family dog. Like if Absolutely. you have children, if you're looking Absolutely. for, if you are looking for a dog to have for your children and you, you just want it to be easy and seamless, they are, they're amazing. They are absolutely are amazing. They um, are. They're wonderful. Love the breed. Are. Yes. So um, all the hair. <laughs> except <laughs> for all the hair, you know, we lost the our last one. A year, it'll be a year in a month a year ago next month and um oh, wow and yeah and you know we well with us using lights and everything like he was 15 so all of my goldens live to wow. between 15 and 17 years old um yes but man i don't i don't miss the hair the i know in that awful because when I lost mine and I, it's been oh my gosh I think I lost my last one in 2010 so it's been a while but it, the yeah the amount of hair was I didn't realize how much hair they 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 had until I went 
wow. Because the setters don't have as much. We have the long, but we don't have a double coat. Interesting. So you specialize. So your current breed of choice, if you will, is Irish setters. Yes, that would be as, a yes. That's as my, the, that's my the sleepy older one laying behind you. That behind you. <laughs> he's he's eleven and a half. That's William. Aww. So he's he my sweetheart. Yeah, he's done. He's done. Uh, field work and uh, little obedience. I never got him into competition. Um, and then he's done the uh, what we call the lure coursing, the fast cat. I don't know if you've heard of that. I have. I have, it's, a, yeah, where they I have a plumber them. terrier. I have a plumber terrier that. Okay. Uh, yeah, a very rare breed um, that yeah, I would like to get into lure coursing because he's fast as lightning and he is a sight dog for it. sure. But yeah. He would absolutely love it. Yeah. yeah. The setters go, I mean, the ones I have, they go crazy. And my, I have my five-year-old, she was running, um, I think she was running almost 25 to 26 miles an hour. Wow. So it was, <laughs> she's yeah, she's pretty fast. fast. <laughs> He's a little slower. In a little... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They slow down, don't they? Yeah, he was yeah. still. Uh, last one we did, he was eleven. And he just turned eleven in January, and he did about. Um, he was a ten second. He did a ten second run. Wow. So I think that's like twenty. Yeah, for his age, was pretty good. That's awesome. I love that. I love that. So, yeah. um, you know, I, Brian and I didn't set out to be dog trainers and we're not professional dog trainers by any stretch of the imagination. But when you have a pack of dogs and, you know, ours range from the puppy that, you know, is a little Frenchy all the way up to uh, the plumber terrier, a Patterdale terrier and a running walker hound. Oh, my and goodness. Yes. And so the Patterdale and the running walker hound came to us as rescues. And, oh, okay. You know, okay. we thought we knew something about training dogs until we got <laughs> those two. And then we realized really fast that we really did not know much about training. <laughs> These are both smart, <laughs> smart dogs. I think the uh, the running walker hound has got to be like the absolute smartest dog we have ever owned. And he's also taught us a lot. And so uh -huh. um, I would like to, you know, I'm going to jump right in because I know that a lot of my audience has a lot of working dogs, a lot of um, dogs that re require a little bit higher level of training and sometimes mm -hmm. people and I, I'm going to fall into this trap too like I started having issues within my pack where I had dogs fighting between each other and that was absolutely yes. not cool and so um we, we had to go get educated but um and it came down to basic mm -hmm. obedience really and so yes. can you talk yes. more about how important the basic fundamentals of obedience are, even if you're not planning on showing? Yeah, I mean, even your basic obedience, because like you just said, um, as far as a pack, you have to be the leader of the pack. Right. And what happens is I, the dogs will start to take over. And if they think that you're underneath them, they start to become the leader. And when that happens, that's when you start having trouble in the pack. And so they have to understand that you're the top dog, not them. And that makes a whole lot of difference. And that's where the obedience comes in. Um, I was just dealing with a German Shepherd that um, is three years old. And I've been working with them for three, three weeks now. And the dog has totally run the house. And he's taken over. And so I told him, I said, you, you've got to change that and you have to start doing the obedience and making him, I have respect issues that I, that I usually start to implement. Um, I teach them. So I have three phases of training. 
which is my teaching motivative training, then I have corrective, then I have proofing. And that can just go with everybody just generally, um, even if you're not going to do competition, um, you still have to have those basic things. The respect issues are what we call a settle, which is basically a down, but a and again, I'm, I'm kind of in competition. So a down is a down for us. A settle is a settle on the hip. And um, we have a let's go, which means if I say let's go, you walk with me. And then we also have a here. The here is like a come, but again, in competition, I use my here for just wherever we're out and I use come for competition. Um, and I have, you know, little reasons for that. But basically, you want to have those things, you know, even in just your your dogs around the house um so if i say settle they can just go lay down um same thing with here if i say here you have to come now let's go if you have your respect issues then it changes like you said it changes your role as a leader um, everything you do especially with the working breeds and that's where the shepherd was coming in um they <laughs> it was supposed to just be they the dog was pulling them and the dog got out of the cars jumping 10 you know five feet in the air nipping at them i i think i just went okay we have a little more problem here <laughs> this, is, right. this is not gonna work <laughs> this is not right. pulling on the lead Cor correct <laughs> so well if, and yes can't yes do that. Yeah, and so we had the 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 walk, or you know, like the sit, the down, the stay, um, mm -hmm. individually and even collectively. Mm -hmm. Like when we go to feed, like we feed our whole pack at the same time, and it's supervised. Mm -hmm. Everybody has to do a sit, and then everybody has to do a down, and they have to do a stay, and then we give the food, and then they wait for us to do a release. And because of, because of, especially my plumber terrier, he's so adrenaline driven. My release mm -hmm. is always, okay. And what would happen is his adrenaline would just go, woohoo. And that would yeah. actually Bring create it. an aggression. And so now I've had to go do the Zen mode and I go, shh. Um, and very, the I was call, just going to say, um, mm -hmm. yeah. And nobody yes. had, nobody you had, had, yeah, nobody had told us that until, you know, we had somebody point that out, but nobody had ever told me calm. So it was sort of a, um, can you talk yes. more about that? Yes. And, and yes, actually the calm, it was so funny when you said that, because I'm thinking, oh yeah, you don't want to do that. <laughs> it's just very calm. <laughs> So, yeah, so when you have a dog that's very high drive, very um, excited, easily to do that, yes, that can actually turn them into aggression if you start, you know, ramping them up. So I tell everybody, and most of my training is that way anyway, unless I have a very dog that I do need to bring up. But if you have a high drive like that or terriers, and terriers are known for that, um, you yeah. want everything to be calm. One. Your, your commands need to be quiet and you never, you don't want to elevate your commands. Like you don't want to start yelling. That's very bad. It means you are out of control as a person and you're also out of control as the pack leader. Um, if you ever went in and saw a pack, the pack leader disciplines very quickly and then it's over, but you don't see anything. With, it's not loud. It's very calm. It's very quick to the point. So our training is everything is quiet. So my commands are very, you know, like down, sit, come. There's, there's no, they can hear. There's no, <laughs> dogs have extremely good hearing. Correct. And if you stay in, in control and calm, you are actually ahead of your, your pack. And you, you definitely want to stay the calm when, like when you do that. And same thing, I, I had the shepherd people, they didn't know that. And they were doing the same thing that the dog would and they go oh good boy and there goes oh. and i'm like no 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 calm and you just go sit and you go and when even when you're praising you go good boy good boy but you don't get excited with a dog like that very oh. important 
Oh, very well, important. See, now yes. I'm so 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 I'm going to go back to my plumber terrier again because I was having to do you know the mean dog mom voice in order like because oh, his yeah. adrenaline would get high at feeding time, he'd run out and he'd start digging like a maniac, and so for mm -hmm. a while there I was like you know having to go Henry you know and and I'm like okay I can't continue this because my neighbors are going to think that like I'm a lunatic <laughs> and that I'm mean to my dogs. And I don't want to like that. I, I don't want to do it that way. And so I sort of went, okay, if I were playing with horses and if I were implementing, you know, what I learned through Pirelli, yeah. I would start with yeah. a whisper. So I go, and I would never go, go above a regular voice. And that, that mm -hmm. really helps him, but I had never, heard, but I didn't think to apply it to all of my commands with all of my oh. dogs. Every one of them, every one of them. So we, we don't have any yelling in my training. Um, like I said, you're out of control in that point and the dog knows it. So it's everything is, is very calm, quiet. Um, and, and some dogs I actually whisper to because they listen, they have to listen to a command if you whisper. So one right. of the things we would do in training, I would have my students go whisper to them. They can hear you. They go, well, they can't. I said, oh yes, they can hear you. Now, if I was in a crowded area, you know, or I'm showing in the ring, I'm not going to whisper to them because they won't Correct. hear me. But at home, absolutely. Correct. Just, and the thing is they have to listen. So if you whisper and you say down and they don't, and they know down, I can give them a little correction. And then next time they're going to listen to you. So right. instead of elevating that um, to, a, you know, like I said, you don't want to yell. I don't allow people to yell, you know, in right. my training. So everything is calm and just very, and no begging, no, no bending. And, and what, what we used to call a geisha, you know, <laughs> <laughs> please do that there's no right, right. <laughs> just please stop working just please let please me work. please we used to call yeah we used to call that that we used to call that um begging train you know like you go in and please do that for us please do that for us it's like, no no it's you're not allowed to, to beg and uh but everything like i said and even your body language says something. So if you stand up straight, and again, I'm putting the shepherd in there because I'm dealing with her right now. Um, they want to do this. They want to lean over and, oh, hi, you know, and, and that absolutely puts you underneath the dog again, as far as the rank um, in the leadership, because now you're not looking strong and in charge. And they know that in a strong working breed or terriers, terriers are very strong. Um, as far as their, you know, um, attitude and you need to show them that you're head of that pack. So you need, your body needs to be up, upright. You need to be very confident in control. And when you say something, a command, it needs to be a command nicely. Like I said it nicely, like I'd say down, but also firmly so that they know that I'm in charge. Like I'm not going, oh, please, would you go down <laughs> and no right. sentences. You can't, you know, <laughs> would you right. please so to touch for me, you know? <laughs> no. Correct. Correct. <laughs> yes. So that's one thing that usually I have to stop people doing very quickly because they want to, they want to send, tell them to do something in a sentence. Like, oh, would you please down for me? No, 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 no. That needs to stop. Just one command down. Um, when I'm in my teaching motivated phase, I will repeat the command because I'm teaching and I'm motivating. Um, when I go to the corrective phase, it's one command and then a correction follows. Um, okay. Same thing in proofing. So that is, that is very important because you'll see people keep repeating three or four times. I said, well, you know, they already know you said that four times. They're gonna wait till the fourth time to do it. Um, if you want them to do it one time, you have to say it the first time and they have to follow through. Again, I have to know my phases. You know, does the dog understand the concept in the teaching motivated phase? Because if he doesn't, then I can't move to the corrective phase. Um, your smart breeds, oh my gosh, they're very quick to pick that up. You, you'll move to a corrective phase. Very, the shepherd's just 
blowing me away right now, you know, as far as how quick he's picked things up. Um, I love my setters, but <laughs> they're not the brightest bulb. <laughs> they're, but they're very trainable, but they're just not up in the level there. <laughs> or, yeah, well, you know, and, I mean, there's, there's a place for every breed and, you know, yeah, there's, absolutely. There's, there's a place for every breed. And I mean, there's a reason that we have our running walker hound. I think we were his fifth home and he was a year old and it's because he's oh. like oh oh my gosh like this dog literally knows how to open every single door in my house and he'll start with my front oh my door God. and if it's locked he will go around my entire house and check every single door oh, oh my god yeah there you go there you, there go. you go and you have and to be and you have to be in charge. And so like, you know, when, you when we, he actually dug into our farm, farm, that's how we got him. We, we weren't looking for a dog. He found us. Oh, so we, you know, we're, oh we're like, gosh. okay, I guess he's supposed to live here. And, um, you know, when he came, like, that's what he would do is like, we'd walk outside and leave him outside and he would jump and he'd jump and he'd grab our arms. And so, you know, we didn't know you oh, at the yeah. time. Otherwise, I would have come to you. But that's exactly yeah. what, you know, we, yeah. we went to a professional and they were like, well, he, he's just in charge. Like, he doesn't respect you guys. <laughs> so, like, you know, like the correction, uh, this to me was interesting. It worked for him. I don't know, you know, and I only have my experience with him. So I don't know if it's correct right, or not, right. but it worked for right, him, right. you know. We would walk outside and if he was jumping, we would completely ignore him, like completely ignore him. And the second, the second that he had four feet on the ground and he took his attention off of us was when we gave him lots of scratches and all the attention in the world. And man, it only yes, took yes, like, yes. oh, yay. Yeah, yay. yeah. Okay. You, did you did it. it. That's, exactly That's exactly what I'll tell people to do. Awesome. Well, it, it worked. It worked. It's harder with little dogs because we get a lot of people that come to visit and and they and the little dogs Much jump harder. up and they pet them and I'm like, please don't do that. You're rewarding the wrong thing. Yeah, because you're actually and that's true. You're actually rewarding the behavior you don't want. And by keeping the four feet on the ground and rewarding, which is where like settle comes in. Settle's a wonderful command for that, especially with little dogs, because it is, it's very hard with little dogs because they're very, it's just too easy for them to jump up and down. Um, right. So I like to do with, with dogs is the settle command is perfect because when people first come in um, or sit, but settle is really nice because they're all way on the ground. <laughs> It's a lot harder for them to get up quicker, whereas sit, all they have to do is basically raise their front feet, you know, and they're up. But so when people are, are greeted, that's what I do. You know, I say settle and I just wait until they settle down. And then so that when people I said you reward the, the thing that you like and not the thing that you don't like. I said, if you right. if they, when they jump up, like you, they come in and go, oh, hi, and the dog's jumping all over me. No, that's not helping us. So yeah, yeah, I tell people to do that too. Yeah. I said always, always praise what you like. Don't praise what you don't like. It right. Does not work well. Correct. Right. Now, do you use? I'm not. I, I'm, I know in the show world they don't use say treats. I think they call it bait. Is that correct? That would be yeah. In the confirmation, we call bait um, in obedience treats that okay. that's what okay. we just use all right. but all right yeah okay all right and, and so you use that in the training as well obviously i do i do i use anything that'll motivate the dog so most dogs are food driven i have had a couple students with with no food drive and that's that's a little more complicated um but we we always like to say praise first praise is first because that comes from you and you can take that in the ring See, we can't take in obedience. I can't take food in the ring. Okay. Um, so I have to do all my obedience exercises and we're in the ring for five minutes. We cannot have food. So we, we, we but I can bring myself and I can bring praise. So we okay. always say praise first 
food second, um, and that makes a big deal. So you, whenever the dog does something right, it, and then the food. So the food is like, oh, okay, well, here we have a piece of food, but I don't make a big deal about the treat. I make okay. a more bigger deal about myself and my praise. And okay. that's it. That's actually very important um, for, for what we do. But I do start with treats in teaching motivated or toys. Depends on if the, the dog likes toys better, I'll use toys. Um, we, had, we had one student that had a um, dog that didn't like anything. I mean, we'd use the praise, but, and I had to find something to motivate it. And she, she finally said, he likes a squirrel tail. <laughs> I went, uh, okay. I said, well, it motivates him. So she got this like fuzzy toy that looked like a squirrel tail. She put string on, on the end of it. And she used to like, just play with him with it. And he loved it, but it worked. I, I mean, you know, yeah, it yeah, was, yes. it was what ever you have to be creative. Um, German shepherds are pit, picky with their food. So one thing we found with them is meatballs. <laughs> they, no. they love meatballs. <laughs> well, who doesn't love meatballs? I mean, come on, yeah. blame them. You know, they they're definitely and what I tell people is I said, you have to find something that they love. Um, like some people bring me treats that, that are these dry treats and, and they could care less. And you bring something out like chicken or meatballs or something that they love and there's total difference. So you have to find what elevates the dog. Sure. And there's going to be something. People go, oh, well, he doesn't like anything. I said, I'm guaranteeing you, I will find something. Even right. if I have to go in the store and <laughs> pick out 3 million things, I will find something. Find something. But, Right. Yeah, which we have done. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yes. 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 Because I, I don't, there's not something. That, that is awesome. Um, one of the things, we live in Florida. You're, you're here too. So you're in, you're in Ocala. And oh, yeah. this is, this is one of the uh -huh. things that I had never thought of until uh, we moved here because we're from Wisconsin originally. Um, but I also thought it was something super oh, important yeah. that more people should be aware of and how these basic mm -hmm. obedience thing commands can really, from a health perspective, save their dog. And so I know Florida, oh. we have lots of snakes, but I also know that I, there's snakes all across the country. And so one of the um, two things, so one of the things is I didn't know there was such a thing, but there is such a thing called snake avoidance training because all snakes yes, have a universal is. scent. And I don't know mm -hmm. that many people are aware of it. I've only ever seen it offered once in Florida. Um, and so mm -hmm. I have two dogs that are, that were trained for snake avoidance and of course the terrier failed the first class so she had to go back a second time <laughs> <laughs> um but but my, 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 my <laughs> right not surprising right but my plumber terrier has not gone through it however um i taught him the command leave it leave it leave mm -hmm. it and so there have been several occasions where I look, happen to look and he's after a snake and I just, and th this is where like the calm voice goes out the window and I just scream, leave it. And he literally will just stop in his tracks and let the snake go. Oh my um, gosh. That's awesome. <laughs> yes. Do you like, I use so the word I, leave it for a while. Okay, and but but it it can be translated into a lot of things because a lot of people live or either Absolutely. on a farm, and um, what other things are do you recommend that for like for the safety of your dog? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Anything that um, and leave it is perfect because we use that of course for training for food. Like if I have a piece of food in my hand, I teach them leave it, get it. 
which is a game, but I can do that with anything. I can do it, yes, with, um, I'll do it with my, with my guys with the birds because we have birds around and yep. the one in the back is known to grow. Yeah, and they'll grab baby birds and I'll just say, leave it and they'll drop it. So leave it comes in very, very handy with snakes, especially anything, snakes, skunks, um, any, any critters that you don't want them near. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Very important. Um, I'd like a good leave it, a good hear. Um, and actually the interesting thing about settle and hear is if like I run my Irish out here and she's been flushing some quail. <laughs> which is what they do um but if you have a good here i can call her off of them uh same thing would be like a snake or something like that if i saw it i could say here and if, if i have them turn on a dime and come to me i've just saved their life as well on that or if they're in the minute you know if they're trying to chase i can say settle and they yeah. drop to the ground that's a very, very handy command. It actually could save their lives if, say, a car was coming, um, even right there. If I have a settle and they drop to the ground immediately when I tell them, that could save their life. So leave it is very important. Um, and like I said, settle and hear. Those are my I, commands I have to have on a dog. Very, very important. And settle, again, you can use that anywhere, anywhere, on anything. Right. Yeah. So is your settle now, because I'm not a competitor, so I'm used to the traditional down. Is that just. Down. A, a you can down? make the down the same thing. It's a okay. down. Mm -hmm. It's a down with, with a hip laying down. So ah. instead of a concertina, what we call a concertina down. Okay. Which is in my competition, I need them doing that more. Um, the settle is when the hip relaxes ah. and a little bit, the reason for that it's better for what we're doing with the settle is because it's harder for them to get up faster from a settle than it is a down. Like if they're in a concertina down, they can pop up, which is why I use that in competition. Um, right. we have an exercise, they have to get up from on the down and I need them to get up and come quickly. So I want them in a concertina. But if they're in where the hip lays over, it takes them a little more effort to get up and they're not as quick. Which the good thing with the settle is, which means if they're after something and I get them into a settle, they can't get up as quick to get to whatever they're going to. I have a little more time to get to them if I need to. Mm -hmm. right. It's more a relaxed position yeah. than it's like a concertina down. Okay. So okay. it's, it's a lovely, it's a really, really good command. Let me tell you how much I use that a lot, a lot. It's, it just a lot. Yes. <laughs> if they're bothering me, so, you know, if they're, you know, how they'll come up and just keep bumping you, like, please do this. I might not settle. So I can use it anytime I need. I love it. It's, it's right. one of my favorite commands. If yeah. I was going to teach anything, I would teach settle here and again let's go those are uh, absolutely my favorite commands sit is a good one but the problem with sit is they can get up again very quickly sure. so settle is wonderful so and i like i said that's the first thing with my people yeah and i would think that um sit is almost really similar to the concertino down because they can activate those back mm -hmm. legs and just spring right off of them in a millisecond versus yes it, you know even i'm going to say settle. standing because then they've got to shift their weight back if they want to run um so mm -hmm. yes and whereas yeah. the sit you know you they have that rear to push off and right. take off on the sit you know which is the thing when we're doing say our competition because i want them to take off and come to me quickly right um, so we teach them actually to to push off the, mm -hmm. right right whereas the settle they're on the ground mm -hmm. Yay. so awesome. this is that's a really good command i would like I said, anybody i would have teach that awesome 
wow, Karen, <laughs> you are just a wealth <laughs> of knowledge. Thank you so much. I have learned, I have learned even more now. Um, like, and I love the little nuances, like, cause most of us aren't into the show world. And so just right. the little itty bitty nuances of the settle versus down, like that is huge. That's huge. So yay. Now I have another goal, <laughs> another something to work on with, with my path. Another, exactly. Exactly. Because the, the other thing that, that we do is competition, which is really important. It's what I always tell my students when I first get them. I said, you have to have house manners. A lot yes. of people think they can do competition and they don't have any house manners. And then they wonder why the dog starts to have trouble in competition. So it's very, house manners are so important for everybody, no matter what you're doing, agility, anything, because you have more control into the dog and competition if you have house manners. If the dog's allowed to run around and do what the hell they want to do in the house, then why do you think they're going to do something for you in competition? Right. Um, so we've, we've had a lot of discussions with competition. People go, oh, I don't need all the basic obedience. I said, yes, you do. Oh, my God. <laughs> you really need that. Well, oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow, they go, wow. they, they think, you know, yeah. Wow. They think that'll stop the dog from doing whatever they need to do. And I said, oh, my gosh, no, it'll make them even better. Um, if they will listen to you at home, you're in good shape in the ring. Right. Right. It, it, it is one of my number. And, and you would be amazed at how many competition people have dogs with no house manners. <laughs> um, we, well, you know, we've worked so this, several this dog big shows big. and, um, so actually I'm not, <laughs> I'm, not <laughs> I'm not surprised. You're not surprised, are you? Not surprising. I'm, I'm also it's, guessing that their house is probably tore apart <laughs> and trashed yes. because the dogs have destroyed it. And um, they have the runaround, you know, they're on the counter, they're on this, they're on that. Right. It's kind of yeah. like unruly children. <laughs> yes. Yes. And so it is funny because we always would say that you've got to have the house manners, even for, you know, like I said, just basic, but for comfort, competition people, it is so important. I, right. I mean, it's just a huge, difference, huge difference. They won't listen to you in the house. What makes them think they're going to listen to you in competition? Exactly. You know, so it's exactly. Very, very exactly. Just, just, yeah. Just little stuff, even, even going out the door, you know, people, people let them go out the door first. Oh. And so you never let the dog go out the dog door first. You go out first, then Correct. the dog gets to go out, you know, Correct. just little stuff like that. Correct. You know, that yes. people don't, don't think about, it. you know, they open the door and they're going to the dogs. <laughs> ex ex exactly. No. Ex exactly. <laughs> or, or the ones that go, Oh, my dog doesn't walk good on a leash and he attacks other people as the dog's 10 feet out in front of them, pulling them along. And it's oh. like, well, of, yeah, but, but they don't do it off lead. Right. So it's like, well, right. Yeah. Get yeah. the dog behind it's, it's you. Right? It's, it's, exactly. Yeah. And I have what we call, and this, the other thing in walking is a two, we call a two foot parameter. Okay, so when we're walking, that dog knows it's two foot parameter. We teach them that they're only allowed certain around us and that's it. Now, I do have a word that says go play or you can go out further. So if I'm on a flexi or something, they'll go out further. If I don't give that command, they are allowed to stay in my two foot parameter, but they're not allowed to do that. So you always walk them on a loose lead. That's another big mistake people make is they let the lead get tight. Right. Um, anytime you let the lead get tight, you're actually encouraging them to pull more. Yeah. So you have to teach them what we call a two foot parameter and on a loose lead. So I can go anywhere with a loose lead and they stay within that two foot parameter, which also helps you for off lead work. Absolutely. That's awesome. Karen, I know that you and I can yeah. chat for another four hours on dog stuff. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> But we have Absolutely. been counting down Absolutely. for almost 50 minutes. 
Um, so oh I know goodness. time flies, right? That's awesome. Um, yeah, it does. It does. Yeah. Now, are you yes. available? Anytime. Yeah. Are you available? Like, do you do like consults, like phone consults or remote consults at all? I can. Um, the thing that, that, and I, and I guess I haven't done because of all this, you know, I used to get new students, but it was a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, before, right. you know, the video thing. So most of my students know my method, which helps me a ton. I, so I can do that talking to them. I haven't tried doing a remote with somebody that's never worked my method. I'm not sure how that works, but I think maybe I, I think I could talk them through it, <laughs> you know, or even just show I haven't tried that, but yeah, you know. Okay. All right. I mean, I'm open for people asking me questions and doing okay, that. Perfect. Absolutely. If, if people. And I'd have, be willing to at least try. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I just, you know, like I said, we've encountered, we run the gamut on different dog training issues and I really had to dig yeah. and hunt and peck and find trainers that specialize or I don't want to say specialize that are at a higher level that know how to be effective um in yes in the these I'm going to say common issues because I think they really are they're more common than people would like other you know than we believe um I agree yeah and so um it'd be great you know it, it, now that I have your number um I will be reaching out to you because I have no idea how to yeah. teach a little six pound puppy how to lay down. <laughs> and actually, you'll be very surprised how easy it is. It's extremely easy with a small. I mean, I start them from shoot. I start my babies usually from seven weeks. OK, um, I'm teaching them things. Yeah. OK, that's, that's right. how we start. It's actually easier to teach them when they're babies. They pick up so quickly and it's yeah. so easy. It's actually harder to teach when they're a little older and they've had training and things that I have to change. Ah, so yeah, seven it. weeks. I, I have little suckers on my table uh, <laughs> and we're working all kinds of stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, I will, I will schedule yeah, your baby. Easy. Yes. I will schedule. That'd be great. Yes. Um, she's that's adorable. And that so would be awesome. Out. I'd love to help you. Yeah. I, oh, I, I bet she is adorable. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> she, she's a little Merle. She's a little Merle colored. So she's gray and black Aww. spotted. Uh -huh. Yeah. She's re ridiculous. Oh my goodness. Ridiculous. Anyway, oh if people would like to get a hold of you, how, how would you prefer that they contact you? Probably if they, they can call, but they probably need to either call and leave. And I've had some trouble. We, we had some trouble with the, with the calling from uh, Susie. <laughs> she and I were like, I don't know where the voicemail went, but it didn't come <laughs> through. But most of, the time, <laughs> most of the time, if they call or text, texting would be good too, because then I could see who it is. Um, okay. And it wouldn't, I wouldn't look at the number and go, oh my God, that's a spam. So probably Perfect. texting, if they do call, text me also. Wait, I know for sure I get their message. So that'd probably be the best thing. They can always email me too. So that's fine as well. Okay. So if you would like to consult with Karen, if you've got a dog that you've got some things going on and you haven't been able to resolve any of the problems, feel free to reach out to Karen. Please text her, identify yourself and say that you were referred by me. Um, so she knows who you are and she knows that it's yes. not a spam and her, she can be texted via phone number 972-679-5400. You can also leave a message. Um, again, just make sure you identify yourself and let her know how you found her. And as you can tell, she is an absolute uh, wealth of knowledge and willing to share. <laughs> and um, and what a delight, just so delightful. Thank so. you. 
Thank Yay. you. I enjoyed it, Donna. Thank you so much. That You're was welcome. that was very fun. Yes. yes. See and that I, that was that was not hard at all. It wasn't. It wasn't. I know. It was like, oh my gosh, can I do this? I don't know. Can I do this? But this, it was great. I'm so glad I could help you too. And oh. yeah, we get together and do your baby. Yeah, yeah, because she's at the point now. She turns four months old tomorrow, and um, you know, she's okay. got sit sit and we're working on come you know like when she hears my voice she's pretty uh -huh. good at, she's pretty good at coming but um i'm like how do you get use a treat with the come you what use was that? a treat with the come use a treat with your come okay so when you show it say come and show her the treat okay because you're in the teaching motivated phase then she'll haul she will haul to get to you um, okay because you want that to be really fun so okay. show her a treat every time you say come right now. And actually down with her will be a piece of cake. Okay. They just, at this age, they just fold into the down really easy. And then we could teach settle. Settle is really a piece of cake. That you just take a treat and do it. <laughs> yeah. So how do I schedule an appointment? I'll be like, I can definitely what let's see most of the days you can well you can call me <laughs> i think i think our numbers will get through i i remember where you live so when squeak and i came and did the horse right and uh so i do remember where you are um okay. but usually um usually tuesdays wednesdays saturday sunday usually work pretty good any of those days i usually work with squeak on thursday friday okay Perfect. So, so we're usually doing horses, horses on those two days. And then okay. Monday, the only thing about Monday, usually we do ozone. So on my dogs. <laughs> yay. So she comes here and we do them on the red. Yes. <laughs> yay. Yay, yay, yay. So we call, call Monday our like, ozone day. <laughs> I would like to do an interview with Squeak. I don't know if I can get her to. So now that you've done it, maybe oh, you can let yeah. her know it's not so scary. I will I'll tell her that would be great if you could. She is so smart too. I mean, oh that God. woman has knowledge is unbelievable. Unbelievable. So yes, I'll tell her. Okay. I'll tell her because then yeah, I bet she would. Now Yay. that we know it's not scary, Donna. <laughs> <laughs> Someday you will thank me, Karen. You will go because I did this interview. I now I'm not so scared. I know it was great because I Susie was so funny. She I said, but Susie, I've never done this. I don't know what to do, and I don't know how to do this, and and what's going to happen? Am I going to see her? Or am I not going to see her? <laughs> it's like what? And she says, don't worry, we're we're good. You just follow this link. We're okay, Susie. <laughs> so we, it was we perfect. This. She was we great. This. It was, Yay. It was great. Yeah. Yes. She helped me with all of it because she was so great. <laughs> we, yes. were, we were going back and forth and like, so she was, she finally, she says, I'll just text you. I'll just text you. She says, okay. <laughs> Susie, so you can unmute yourself and come on in, sister. You don't need to hide and turn off the recording too. <laughs> 